Hello and welcome to Industries Helping Hands. We welcome you to the talk with industry expert session. Where in this video we are going to have a conversation with an electric vehicle industry expert Neha Mehta ma'am, PR Corporate Communications at Obain Electric. She is having a rich experience and proficient knowledge in the EV industry and having a key expertise in the areas of corporate training, diversity and inclusion, leadership development, team building, training marketing consulting public relations marketing strategy and product marketing and copywriting obain ev is an electric vehicle company developing new electric two wheelers in house with developed components to deliver high quality products from the indian market and founded by iit kharagpur and iim bangalore alumni obain's vision is to use technology as a tool to become the market leader by developing reliable performance oriented and connected electric two wheelers with the world class designs for the customers obain's strong foundation is led by an extraordinary team of people who bring successful entrepreneurial experience with hands on expertise in developing and manufacturing electric two wheelers with complementing skill sets required to make it success the automobile sector is now at the cusp of electric vehicle transition and the students across india wanted to know how the ev industry is unlocking job opportunities and in this session we are going to find out all this answers so if you want to know more about the electric vehicle courses you can visit our website industrieshelpinghands.com or you can also install our mobile application and for more updates you can join our whatsapp group and telegram channel the link is in the below description box industries helping hands has covered the talk session with various industries expert you can see that on the below description so let's start this session see communication is a very very important part as a human being right um one is if you can't communicate what you're thinking you fall flat right then forget it you're not going anywhere uh but if you're able to communicate and you have that command over your english i am telling you you will go places an example from my work ex so when i um started off from college i was you know all of us are like really excited oh it's my first job i'm going to land up my first job and this is what i expect that is what i expect uh you know to be honest yes all of us have expectations as human beings but as students uh i would say you know just keep your expectations a little low okay because uh when you go with a lot of expectations and you don't get that you feel dejected and you feel that you're not good enough for it probably right i would this is something that i would say to all of all of you that each one of you are unique and what you will bring across to the tables of all these companies or your future employers is going to be very different from all your other friends so do not compare Number one, do not set set those expectations. Hello and welcome to Industries Helping Hands. It's the industry talk expert session, and today we are having with us our very special guest, one of the dynamic leader of the electric vehicle industry, who is having a rich experience as well as proficient knowledge in the EV industry. Neha Mehta Ma, PR at in Corporate Communications at Obain Electric. So thank you so much, Ma, for joining us today. Thank you so much Industries Helping Hands for having me at this platform. Uh it's a pleasure and honor to be addressing all the students here today. Hello everybody. So thank you so much ma'am our whole student community is very excited to have the conversation with you. They are having so much questions in their mind because right now it's a time for the electric vehicle revolution, EV boom everywhere. But normally usually there are many questions comes in the mind of the student like how they have to make their career in the EV industry. all these questions are juggling with their mind so basically they they are having so many questions to ask to you so i would like to say to our student community across india the session is going to be very fruitful because for answering all the questions like how to make a career in the ev industry or what are the skills that is important for the ev industry for answering all these questions we are having very experienced and very knowledgeable neha ma'am so ma'am i would like to know your opinion is the time for the ev revolution uh, like uh, electric vehicles are at the cusp of transforming the mobility in india so how this transformation brings the opportunities for the students ma'am i would like to know your views kindly guide the student community 
Sure. Uh, so everybody has been hearing a lot about EVs. Uh, there are so many scooters. There are motorcycles also in the line um, of launch. Now, if you look at it, um, I think majorly it is being heralded by the four wheelers. You can see Tata with the Tata product Nexon is you know, really rolling on the streets. And you can see every third or fourth car today is a Tata Nexon, right? So we know that the EV industry is growing and it is here to stay. I mean, future is electric, end of the day. We can't be relying on uh, the fossil fuel generated based energy all this while, right? And somewhere these resources will you know, fall short. And then what do we do in that case, right? Uh, that is one of the reasons why the government is uh, looking at pushing forth the EV industry with a lot many incentives at the production level, at the manufacturing level. Um, you know, even when the consumer goes to buy the product, you know, there are a lot of incentives for the consumer. So th there are a lot of incentives from the first leg till the last leg of the entire EV industry. The EV industry itself is an entire, uh, you know, it's, it's a whole big ecosystem as such. So when I say ecosystem, there is one, one point which is, you know, power generation through where electric vehicles get charged. So we usually use the electrical ports or the charger is provided by the manufacturer. And then you move on to the production of the electric vehicle as such. So you have so many players today in the market who are making or manufacturing electric vehicles. And the third is the one who provides the additional services that makes the entire uh, ecosystem to run, which is your charging stations, whether it's providing services, uh, you know, Swiggy and uh, Zomato get these electric bikes too. So this is this is the last mile delivery. So there are a lot of opportunities across this entire uh, um, stage, you know, um, and that brings on a lot of opportunities for people, for individuals who are looking at making a career in the industry. One thing I can really tell all of you is that EV industry is a very promising industry, though we are at a very nascent stage. Um, you know, we are still developing. We are as, ourselves trying to understand within India. I'm saying when I look at Germany or when I look at US or when I look at Australia or Norway, these are all largely and fairly well developed markets. Uh, in terms of uh, EV manufacturer production and consumption. Uh, but when it comes to India, we're still at a very, very nascent stage. There's a lot for us to learn. Um, and I'm sure all of you have gone through a lot of incidents that happened with electric scooters in the past, right? So it's been a learning phase. It's been a learning curve for those manufacturers. But having said so, there are manufacturers who have already done their research and development. Uh, these are companies who have spent years in testing the product for the Indian consumer. And hence, you will not see these kind of incidents happening moving forward because they are the ones who have built this product ground up with their knowledge. And it's a fantastic product, you know, that they have. Uh, one, one of those companies that I'm working for uh, is today, you know, I'm, I'm working with Oven Electric and they are somebody who come across as a very promising com uh, company and manufacturer. Um, so there are uh, so these are the kind of opportunities that you can look at. So when you look at um, at the power generation level, there are a lot of people who are wanting to you know kind of make a career in terms of what can we do to bring greener uh, uh, solutions, alternate alternative natural resources uh, based solutions. We're looking at hybrid models. So there are people who do make a career in that field. Now that is a whole different. Uh, length of discussion altogether. Uh, that is something wherein you would want to, you know, get into the sustainability part, the go green part. You know, you would want to tie up and work with NGOs. So that's a different career altogether. If you're looking at making a career per se only within the EV industry, then there are different uh, levels that you can uh, kind of explore. One is at the shop floor level, wherein you get your hands dirty making the vehicle. And that is where you need courses like mechanical engineering, or you need to understand, you need to have some technical uh, courses, which IIT provides. Today, if you look at it, IIT is one of the biggest institutes that has specific courses for the EV industry or individuals who are interested in making a career in the EV industry. But this is a very promising and growing industry. So you not just get to learn, but you're growing with the industry. So say 20 years, 30 years down the line, you may be termed as a veteran within the industry. So that is one of the greatest things that you will ever achieve in a career is to be known as a veteran within the industry, right? Uh, this is the second thing. Third thing is about charging infrastructure, uh, providing the support that an EV needs to be built on. For example, you know, bringing the components within India, making the components in India rather than bringing them. Uh, so you provide that sort of support system where you have, you become a vendor or you do certain courses which are science-based courses, technical courses, which help you to understand how do I build a battery today that I can provide to all the EV, uh, EV manufacturers within India. Will that help me to push forth this industry? So any career that you make within the industry, you are being a support pillar for the industry today. That's how I would put it across. Absolutely, ma'am. Like the 
for a student community to learn from you and basically whenever we are having the interaction with the students they come up with the questions like uh, what are the skills that uh, industry is looking right now among the fresher and the students who are currently in the college also so that they can prepare accordingly and prepare themselves for the industry needs so as an industry expert ma'am i would like to know your opinions what are the skills that students should have to develop to get into the ev industry like i said the first thing is if you want to get into the technical side you need to have the technical knowledge you need to have that course so you might want to look at an iit today you want to there are i mean it's not just iit there are many other institutes who are providing these specialized customized courses for students that will only teach you about the ev industry uh, the second thing is if you have automotive knowledge and you you know if even germany today provides one of the best automotive courses but not all of us have access to a germany course or to uh, or to a course in germany or to a german course right so what do you do in that case there are a lot of companies uh, the automotive companies i'm talking about ones who have long legacies like a bajaj or um, or a tata you know these guys also have certain courses which are designed on the automotive side not specifically focused to ev because they are also learning in this in this process right it's a new thing for everybody here so those kind of courses you can look at if you are interested in designing an automotive if you're interested in putting the automotive components together if you're interested in building the product ground up so these two things are are something that you can look at the other opportunity is if you're looking at creating a mark within the management running an ev company then you can also look at an mba um if you there are a lot of uh, areas to explore there's hr there is management there's corporate strategy uh, there is pr and copcom uh there is um, admin there is sales business development all of these ev industry is it may be a new industry but it is not different from any other industry in in across the world we have the same amount of functions we have the same kind of functions the only thing that is different here is the product so if you want to make that mark for yourself that hey look i want to be seen along with the product and i my name should be something that is resonated along with the product's name then the technical area or the automotive area is where you would want to make a mark so these are the things uh, these are the skills or these are the opportunities that students can explore absolutely all right ma'am and ma'am there is one more thing that is right now missing while the student starts preparing for any placement opportunities they are having their own college curriculum and they are more focused towards this, their core subjects but in the industry the communication skills also plays a very important role so skills you are already mm -hmm. in this field from a very long time you are having a great experience in it so kindly guide the students ma'am regarding how they have to prepare themselves for the interviews and how the communication skill is important even after cracking the interview and uh, in in the industry itself right see communication is a very very important part as a human being right um one is if you can't communicate what you're thinking you fall flat right then forget it you're not going anywhere uh, but if you're able to communicate and you have that command over your english i am telling you you will go places if you're looking at making um, a career only in communications be it any industry not just the eu industry you really need to have a first things to you really need to have a good command over your english um, get your words right understanding what kind of word should be used where there's always i mean like they say english is a very funny language yes it is because uh, if you substitute one word for the uh, for the other even if i mean despite they being synonyms the entire meaning changes right so the first thing um, even what you know even which i feel is very important is when i write certain articles for the company i read them at least 3 4 times across to make sure that this is what i mean and this is what my company wants to put across because with communications in an in any sort of industry any sort of company one thing that is misspelled or one thing that has been misrepresented is a disaster for the company right um if you are sorted with you know getting on top of your english uh you know putting things in the right way i think you are you are set with whatever career you want to make in life if you feel that you know you aren't there yet um i suggest you really need to read a lot reading gets you there uh try writing on your own smaller articles 300 words 500 words and then you will you will be set and then you kind of you know pick up a topic right on that and then try to compare it on what's available online there are a lot of white papers there are a lot of publications that are available which have been written brilliantly with with excellent communication so i think you need to prepare yourselves get reading onto that and that will really really land you somewhere exactly and mom there is one more thing i 
I, I totally understand you are having the communication every day with different kind of people as you are into the corporate communication. One day you are having the meeting with corporate, then young talents also. So, ma'am, I would like to know your opinions. The basically the young workforce is right now in the college, who is going to contribute uh, in the industry very soon. So, training and placement department plays a very important role to nurture this uh, talent. So, what kind of advices would you like to give to a training and placement department of the colleges, ma'am, so that they can update their curriculum or prepare their uh, students accordingly as per the industry demands and the needs, ma'am? Right. I think I will start with um, an example from my work ex. So when I um, started off from college, I was, you know, all of us are like really excited. Oh, it's my first job. I'm going to land up my first job. And this is what I expect. That is what I expect. Uh, you know, to be honest, yes, all of us have expectations as human beings. But as students, uh, I would say, you know, just keep your expectations a little low. OK, because uh, when you go with a lot of expectations and you don't get that, you feel dejected and you feel that you're not good enough for it, probably. Right. I would. This is something that I would say to all of all of you that each one of you are unique. And what you will bring across to the tables of all these companies or your future employers is going to be very different from all your other friends. So do not compare. Number one, do not set, set those expectations. And I think the college can really help and guide students here because all, you know, every time, you know, when it comes to the training and development department of the colleges, we always tell them, you got to say this, you got to say that, you be prepared this way. You Don't do that. Just, just be yourself because that's where you will really communicate and connect with the company and with the HR. That is what a company's HR looks for. They look for genuine people. I don't want... You know, I, I usually tell all my other students and the interns that we have at the organization, be yourself and be true and say these are your strengths. You know, your strengths cannot be um, I'm very bold. I'm I can do this. I can do that. Those are not your strengths. So your strengths could be I am, uh, you know, I'm very great with research because I read a lot. These are the websites that I refer to. And these are the sources that I feel I get all my information from. So that really puts the hammer into the wall when you say that. I did this and I have this backing, right? So I feel students should really come forth with the true facts, you know, try not to portray somebody that you are not because that will really get you to the right job. And believe me, when you are with the right job, there's nothing else you would want to see. And when you're happy with the job, you're happy you don't want to move on. And that's where you grow. Absolutely, all right. And uh, mom, like uh, we have seen the kind of differences among in the branches of the colleges itself, like in mechanical, if there is a strength of 90, out of 80 or 85, there will be boys and five will be girls. So whenever I'm having the interaction with the girls who are basically in this mechanical and electro electronics and electrical field, so basically they are not basically sure, they are asking me, so that's why I'm asking to you directly. They are asking me, is there like a scope for the girls in the EV industry? As a, a woman, ma'am, you have seen this uh, things from the scratch. I would like to know your opinions and kindly motivate uh, the girl student also, ma'am, so that they can look yeah. forward the career in the EV industry. Right. Um, so all I would like to say is that, see, there is no prejudice here. Okay. The prejudice comes from here. So when you think that a woman can't do it, she can't. But when you think you can, you can, right? If I have to look at it today um, or probably compare it with, uh, say, 10, 15 years back, I wouldn't see a single uh, woman biker on the street. But today, you know, when I stop at the signal, I feel really proud because somewhere within the traffic, I see one girl riding that one bullet or Royal Enfield. And I feel really proud about it because this is something which has started from here and it has to stop here. Right. So. Uh, there is a huge, huge opportunity, trust me, uh, be it the EV industry or within the automotive industry. It's just that we think that the bike belongs to the man. It doesn't. Sorry, boys, but it doesn't. It is something which was created for commuting. It is something that did not say that it is only, you know, to be ridden by the male, uh, the male community, right? That doesn't happen. Uh, plus, there are a lot many automotives that will come now, which are meant for both women and men to ride. The whole point is mobility getting from one point to another. That is what end of the day a bike or a scooter or any other vehicle would give you, even car for that matter. Um, when, you know, uh, with, with women, um, for example, my uh, the company that I work with, Open Electric, has been founded and the CEO of the company is a lady. And she has done this single-handedly, believe me, she has gone out there into the market, raised funds 
for the company. She has built this company with her ideas and she said, why not? Why not? Yes, of course, she faced a lot of challenges. They, we still face those challenges um, at, at this level because, yeah, there are certain uh, areas where we kind of take a step back, whether it's with family, whether it's with kids or whether it's with any other issues. OK, uh, but that should not be a deterrent. That should not be a factor that should stop us from what we want to do. And I don't see why uh, automotive is considered as rocket science by women. Most women, it is not. Trust me. End of the day. Those are just four or two wheels on a set of components put together. It's it's no rocket science, no gimmick to understand. It's very easy. You just need to put your heart to it. If you have your heart to it, if you really like following it, start reading. I would always say reading really helps you a lot. That's one thing that we do at the PR and communication level. Reading gets us there. And, we, you know, as a lady, I'm proud today because I can stand uh, amongst 10 media guys and tell them, hey, look, this is not how a sprocket works or this is not how a uh, chain drive in the uh, motorcycle works. And they are shocked they, because they never expected a woman talking technical, right? Uh, usually women would come across saying, oh, that bike looks nice, but it would have been better in a red color, right? Oh, or this is a super bike. It might run at a, uh, you know, at, at, at the uh, race or at a track. But believe me, it's no rocket science. If I can do it, any woman in this world can do it. And it's absolutely visible in your personality itself, ma'am. A reader is always a leader. And when yes. a woman talks about the technology, it's really something very inspiring for the girls also who is watching our conversation. And uh, my basic step of communication involves not only just the way you represent in the interview or even after going into the industry. For the student, it starts with the writing communication also is very important when, you, when the students prepare a resume and the CV. So what are your piece of advices for them ma'am, so that they can improvise on their communication skills through writing as well, through their CVs and uh, uh, all the things. I'm kindly guide, guide uh, regarding this ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so I brought this uh, up earlier also that, you know, reading is important, but reading and writing are actually synonymous to each other. So if you are able to read well, but you're not able to write well, then there is an issue or vice versa. So what you need to do is, like I said, you need to get started wherein you read and then you write articles on your own. You might go wrong. And that's absolutely okay. You don't have to be dejected about it. It's not the end of the world, right? Uh, start writing 300 words, 500 words, pick a topic, could be anything. So if you're looking at making a career within the automotive industry, like I said, pick one particular component within the bike or the car, write about it. So that will also get, you know, kind of get you to a platform where you understand, okay, this is the limit that I understand about this particular thing. And this is something where I need to read a lot. And, you know, I mean, with millennials and with, with generation XYZ, all of you are blessed. We are blessed to have Google as a new daddy, right? We don't ask our parents anymore. We just Google it out, right? Or we go to a YouTube or, a, or, or an Insta and then find out. And everything is available, right? So I would say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the 90s kid. So... My access to knowledge was very limited only through books or to my parents, right? And parents are also humans at the end of the day. They also have, you know, just a limited set of knowledge. They would pass it on to you as it was passed on to them by their forefathers, right? But here you have an entire ocean open for you. You name it and you get it, right, online or from anywhere else, from any of the social media platforms. So use that. I mean, some because whatever we had was, you know, through the textbooks written, but today you have everything through vision and what gets registered through your eyes onto your brain is faster than what you read, right? So utilize these resources and make the best use of them. You know, don't, I would, I, I would say, don't look at those silly videos on TikToks where somebody is dancing. That's not going to get you anywhere, right? If you really want to make that career, if you really want to make a mark for yourself, these are the things that you should really, really look out for. Look at those videos. They are amazing. Today, there are a lot of influencers who do real, true content. You know, These are really rich with knowledge. Um, they don't come across with stand-up comedy or anything of that sort. These people will bang on, tell you, okay, this is the issue and this is how it needs to be fixed and this is what you need to do. They will guide you on courses. They will guide you on what needs to be learned, what needs to be done, all of that. So I think the, these are some things that, you know, as students should, should really look out for exactly instead of moving towards this at particular this age regarding the entertainment infotainment is something that is very important in like gathering the information from all the rich sources that uh, we are already having so mom i would like to know that whenever any new technology comes it opens the door of opportunities for jobs also so how open electric uh, is right now helping the students uh, for uh, their career opportunities and in future as well, ma'am, would like to know from you. 
Yeah, so um, I'm very happy and glad to share that we are a very, very fast growing and upcoming company. Uh, we have about uh, 13 interns today working with us. Uh, these are people who wanted to, you know, kind of make a career and understand what the EV industry looks like from within, right? Everybody's seen it from the outside. Everybody sees the product, but they don't know how it is made. They don't know what kind of uh, uh, work is put across, you know, how much midnight oil we burn to make everything work. So uh, they wanted an insight into it and we took them on board into different functions. Somebody was interested in HR, somebody was interested in sales. Somebody was interested in marketing, so we put them accordingly that way. Um, and they're extremely happy. They're enjoying it. So I think if you want to start, like kickstart your career with the industry, I would suggest you look for an, uh, an internship first where you get a hands-on knowledge of what the industry looks like or what an EV manufacturing company looks like from within, right? Um, there are certain areas which work differently. You know, with startups, it's different from an established company. It's different. When you go to an established company, everything is set for you. There are a set of rules that you need to follow. Um, you know, this is what should be done and this is something that you should not talk about outside the company and things like that so those set of rules are there but then when you come to a startup it's 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 like a clean slate it's like a blackboard that you want to put things together right so this i feel you know being with a startup is more challenging than being um, you know associated with um, a set company right there are a lot of challenges when you come with a startup and believe me these challenges are a new learning experience every day so what we do today may not be the same what, with what we do tomorrow and day after. So all three days, I would say, are a different learning experience. And these are rich experiences, something you will not find with a set company, trust me. So I've worked with Mahindra before, uh, and now I'm with a startup. So I see the huge difference between both of them. Uh, Mahindra comes with dictated terms. It comes with various conditions that this is what can be done. This should not be done. You know, so that when the, this should not be done comes in, you are kind of, you know, put on a step back saying that, Oh, I can't use my creative ideas because this is the set rule with the company. But when you come with a startup, oh, this is a big blackboard for me to draw my ideas on, right? So you draw the idea and the idea gets selected because that is what we want to do right now. All ideas, all hands on deck are welcome with, an, with a startup. Absolutely. And uh, one, one more thing, we got this uh, like question from the students, especially who are in the BTech stream. So they are willing to know in which year basically they have to start their preparation because the industry is very new for them also. In which year they have to start and what are the things they should have to include in their preparation. So kindly throw some light on this matter also, ma'am. Yeah, sure. Like I said, um, since we are a very, very new industry, um, even the manufacturers have a lot of learning to do as they grow. Um, I feel you basically start after your bachelor's, you start with an internship. Um, if you feel that this internship is building on to what you want to do or explore within the EV industry, I suggest post that most of the companies, most of the interns um, accumulate them within the organization and say, okay, you did six months internship with us. So we take you within this function and they offer you a job, right? Most of the times, this is a scenario, even with set companies. Um, post, if that internship does not uh, make you feel satisfied internally you know you don't feel that uh, oh no i thought it was like this but i don't think i would want to approach this then you carry on with you know you go you move ahead with you know whatever life's goal you have or career goals you've set for yourself uh, but a master's is any day recommended please do not stop with a bachelor's uh, with masters you go anywhere in the world trust me and with this ev industry growing in india and, uh, you know, the world also hasn't even achieved that 50%. They are still there. But yeah, they're far more developed than the Indian uh, scenario in terms of EV. You can always go places. Um, with Tesla, Tesla was about to come to India, but it had to take a U-turn on its plan. Uh, but imagine all these bigger players coming in and they would definitely look at hiring the local uh, uh, resource. So this, there's a big opportunity here. Imagine working with somebody like an Elon Musk. I mean, it's it's a dream come true, right? If you're make, want, wanting to make a career within this industry. Um, and then if you're looking at, if you have that access, you want to go out, you want to go abroad, I would suggest German um, courses are bang on. They are designed in a way where you come out producing qualitative products for the entire country right now we talk about mercedes we talk about bmw these are all german but where are all these bigger brands coming from from germany and they've been here for for many many years right across the industry every consumer household even a kid knows what a mark is right so that is the power of qualitative engineering uh, 
and that comes in when you you know when you when you pursue your career you complete that masters masters is really important do not stop at a bachelors absolutely and uh, ma'am what kind of advices would you like to give to our student community like you are having a rich experience in this field right from the beginning you have also completed your graduation and then everything and then you come to the industry and you have seen the things very closely because learning is something that is different when we are in the college and working in the industry and then after established company that again start your career with the startup so there are so many challenges that you have also faced in your entire journey so ma'am kindly uh, like give some advices to our students at who are currently at the age of 24 25 so kindly just to guide them ma'am yeah um i think all these years there was one big lesson that i learned um across all the various organizations that i have worked for so i've been through pharma i have worked with um, automotive i've worked with insurance i've worked with bank i i mean i think i've i've put my hands and i've got them dirty in almost every industry now um i think except um, uh, the major uh, fmcg companies i think i've touched almost every uh, industry by now uh, there was one major thing that i really learned and i said to myself that i am going to always carve this etch this within my memory Uh, is that if anybody tells you, um, you know, while you're uh, working, and they put you down and say you've done a you've done a shoddy job, right? Or this is not the kind of document I expected. This is this is a terrible job that you've done. Please do not term that as a failure. Kindly treat that as a learning experience, because with a work coming in, there is a lot of responsibility, a lot of expectations that even the company sets. It's not just one way that you have certain expectations. The company also has expectations. So once you've performed, the company always feels, or we as an employer feel that you you are a very good resource and you can do much better than this. And that's where you also grow, right? That's where you get carved out into an individual, into a in, into a real corporate head on core, right? And that's where everybody wants to get it, right? be known across corporate circles of course the monetary factor is there but that comes only when you have greater responsibility so if you look at our vp doing a holiday in maldives remember he's really really worked hard to get there okay nobody gets to be a vp just like that or you can't expect that that sort of a, a package and that sort of a level as soon as you get out of college you need to build that rapo you need to prove yourself to get to that level right and then once you're there you're there no there there are no comms and nobody is going to question you on anything uh the second thing is that uh don't feel dejected at any point in time if you've not been able to keep up to a job um, or if you've not done a if you feel that you have not contributed well enough that's not the end of the world there are only two things always in life one is winning and the other is learning there's no such thing as losing right so there is really no such thing as losing trust me because the day you feel you have lost it you have really lost it and that's when you call quits right so and we don't want to get there that's that's a really dark place and nobody wants to be there we all either want to win or you want to learn you learn to win and that's how both of them go together thank you thank you so much ma'am how simply and how beautifully you have described the things to the students thank you so much ma'am and i hope that the students who are watching right now will definitely find this session very fruitful Thank you so much ma'am for giving all your time